Ah, what's going on, guys? Good morning to you all. It's your boy Ryan here. I'm back uh, with some uh, gaming news for you. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to all the new subscribers. Like always, appreciate you. You all are great for the subscribing. Thank you. Uh, thank you to, uh, for all the support on the last video. I'm glad at least all of you, you know, actually watched the video and got where I was coming from and understood the point. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna, I mean, obviously I'm going to address uh, two uh, major points in this video. All right, and that involves PlayStation Now and the PlayStation 5. Now, you have idiots attacking my subscribers and attacking my channel saying PlayStation 4 games are going to PlayStation Now. And I'm getting ready to shut that up permanently. And, uh, you know, if all the idiots saying all games are on the service, yeah, you're just going to be labeled as a liar. And, uh, well, I don't need to block you. You're just going to get destroyed by yourself, so whatever. <laughs> anyway, before we get into let's go ahead and get into this other stuff. I'm going to go right do this real fast. Um, Battlegrounds for the PS4. Uh, the launch faces major delay as release date changes. Okay. So, I mean, there you go. Today, I want to update everyone on Player Unknown's Battlegrounds uh, progress due early access. The amount of support and feedback we have received from our community has been incredible. I want to thank you all for your bug reports, feedback suggestions as we continue to fix uh, bugs improve gameplay and add new content it's important uh to us or to for us to deliver you a fully realized and polished uh battle royal experience as we look towards launch over the past few months i have done a lot of interviews and in many of them i have said we hope to be out of early access six months after we first launched or first launched, I've come to realize that restricting the window to a, a specific month could uh, hinder us from delivering a fully featured game and or lead to disappointment within the community if the launch deadline is not met. So, we have decided that we are going to push the full launch back a bit from the initial six-month uh, time frame, but want to assure you that uh, we are still planning a full release before the end of the Q4 uh, 2017. Okay. Now, obviously, this is coming to PlayStation 4, but obviously it's on Xbox One uh, first. It's going to be on Xbox One X and PC uh, first. It's coming to PlayStation 4. Honestly, I don't see people buying an Xbox for this, but, you know, some people, some fanboys are in denial saying this people are going to buy an Xbox just for this one specific game. Yeah, this game is coming to PlayStation 4, and it's already on PC. It's not really going to make someone who's on PC even bat an eyelash at Xbox, especially when the game's already been on PC for years. So, just throwing it out there. Sure, I'm going to have some media saying, oh, you always did jazz, but no, I'm hitting you with common sense. So, let's get that out the way. God of War Dev reveals awesome dynamic combat between Kratos and Sun. Now, you already know, you, um... In God of War, you have a companion the entire time, similar to Ellie. You have, um, uh, okay, sorry about that, that's my phone. But, you know, God of War, this time around, you have a companion, a.k.a. your son. I forgot his name. I really did not pay that much attention to his name. I don't know if they've uh, announced his name. If not, I gotta look it up. But, um, anyway, so you have his son. And uh, he's playing a big part in this game. Uh, you know, there's like combos from what I've seen from E3 last year when they first uh, showed it off. You know, like he was shooting the the the, um, the troll or whatever that was with a uh, lightning arrow. And like it stunned him and then you can like hit him with like a heavy attack or something like that. So there's a lot of, there's combos in this you can do. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, uh, I want to see where they go with it, obviously, you know. So, we're going to see where they end. Hopefully, um, they don't do nothing silly like, okay, let's kill Kratos and then let's pass the mantle of God of War to the kid. I know that's reaching, but you know how these games are. When they introduce someone new, they usually tend to make that character be the one that either ends the series or have that person be the one that legit um, uh, replaces a character that we've known. But really, um, you know. That really just is, um, okay, that might be him. Okay, yeah, okay, so Ar Atreus, that's his name, Atreus. Okay, there's really a cool move where he, Atreus, jumps on the back of enemies, um, and you hit the square button, which is for the sun, and he'll jump um, 
uh, jump o above the enemy's uh, back and start firing arrows. And then you can throw your axe. And that's just one example of the dynamism between him, Kratos, and Atreus. Okay, so there you go. There's some moves. Uh, it's, uh, it's inner, in, uh, inner, uh, no, sorry. Blah, excuse me. Where is it at? Okay. It's indeterminate um, amount of time between the end of God of War 3 and the beginning of the game. He said, we wanted to put Kratos on a deeply personal quest. Okay. So there you go. We haven't even met the mom. Who is the mom of Atreus? We don't, we don't even know who the mom is. We heard a woman talk at um, the little uh, gameplay, I guess, trailer they showed at um, E3 this year. We heard a woman talk um, and all that jazz, but we don't know who is the mother. And excuse me for my reading. I am. I just woke up. Excuse me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we don't know who the mother is. We don't know what she's up to. We don't know what her um, deal is, you know? You know? And um, that's the thing. We don't know exactly. So, uh, I don't know what they're going to do with the um, with the mom and all that. But we'll see as we get there. We're almost there. We're getting there. So, we'll see. I was when the game was released. Everybody was going to be having fun. So, there you go. Okay. This right here is how to improve your download speed for your PlayStation 4. And I guess PS4 Pro Lightning Quick. Um... Obviously, the main one, the one, the main things they want you to do is uh, plug your system into Wi-Fi or um, in wired and get off of Wi-Fi. I have mine always on wired, but there's some settings you want to do too, especially if you're on Wi-Fi. Now, okay, where is that? Okay, so when you go to your uh, DNS, you want to change your DNS. You want to change your MTU settings. Okay, uh, how you do this? You go to settings, you go to network, go to set up internet connection. Obviously, you choose your Wi-Fi or your, or your wired connection, a.k.a. LAN cable. You choose custom. Um, now, you can select automatic if you want or do not and do not specify it and select manual. You can do that if, if you want. But uh, what you want to do is you want to go into your DNS and you want to change uh, that to manual. These are the numbers you want to put in. These are Google's uh, numbers. You want to put 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And then for the secondary DNS, you want to put 8.8.4.4. .4. I used this a few times. I stopped using it, though, because I use my own. I have a NetDuma, so I don't really have to enter this. But uh, a lot of people still use this. So, I mean, it's, it's there if you like that. I, for one, do not need it. Uh, another um, another uh, thing you want to do is change your MTU. Now, as you clearly see, it says 1473. What is that? That is Sony's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's Sony's MTU for PlayStation Network to allow uh, you to instantly connect, no problems. So if you have that set and let's say uh, PlayStation Now or PlayStation Plus, I'm sorry, isn't really um, responding and it says, hey, look, PlayStation, uh, you know, is under maintenance. Well, that means that is legit under maintenance and they're doing something. OK, so keep that in mind if you legit have those numbers in and you don't really connect. But those right there, that number right there should uh, ensure you that you're on. Another number you can do is 1450. I have never tried this number. I think I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that number. But, um, you know, that's cool. So we have two numbers now we can choose from 1450 and 1473. So there you go. Uh, then you want to select. Okay. Then you obviously have to put that in. It's going to tell you a speed test. It's going to diagnose you know, your connection. It's going to tell you whether your PS4 has got the internet. Everything I might have to do this live on the channel. I might have to do this live on my PS4 just to show you. But um, you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, with all that being said, you want to do that, and then boom, you're in, and then you're good to go. So that's how it should work, and everything should be at least faster. Your system should have a little bit better of a speed, and all that jazz. All right. Obviously, the last thing you want to do. Um, on your PlayStation 4 to ensure your system's fast is port forward. Now, how to do port forwarding? You go to portforward.com. So I'll do this right here for you. Uh, portforward.com. And then you go to here. And then it's going to show uh, this right here. You want to go to, where is it at? Hold on. Uh, how to, excuse me. Let me close this. You go to how to. Uh, port forward your router. Where is it? Uh, uh, that's not it. Whoops. Uh, port forwarding, guys. I'm sorry. So you go to router. You go under routers, and you go to port forwarding guides. And then this right here will tell you 
uh, all the brands, basically. You know what I'm saying? All the brands of your router. Now, this right here, I have a NetDoom, and mine is, like, very, very super simple. It just says port forwarding. Boom, I'm done. So, I don't really have to really use this, but let's say if I had a... Uh, what was that router that I had? It started with an R. Um, that I used to have. It started with an R. I think it was... No, that's not it. Um... I say Netgear. Yeah, okay. It was Netgear and it was R, right? Yeah, okay. It was RS. Is it over here? No. Okay. No, you're not. They don't have that on there. Well, let's see. I had, a, I had a Netgear and I do this. It would tell you how to set it up. It'll tell you what's entering your IP address. And then you're in and then you do everything. And then you go through the list and you open the ports. And these will be the ports that you enter. Okay. So that would tell you how to do it. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. Now, if you have a NetDuma, like I do, you enter that, obviously. You enter your NetDuma address. Uh, you go to settings. You go to port forwarding. And then you set up port forwarding. Now, as you clearly see, I don't have any rules applied. Why? Because I have good internet and I haven't run into a single issue with port forwarding. Or I haven't run into a, a single issue that, that needs me to port forward. But there you go. It's very simple if you do that. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So hopefully that was uh, that helps you. All right. So there you go. If you guys want me to do a legit video where like I'm actually inputting the numbers, I'll do it. So let me know. But uh, that's about it. All right. Now this right here has retards coming to my channel talking trash because of the other video I posted yesterday where I'm just being calm, collective, and just talking to you with facts. You have to be saying I'm being a fanboy, I'm being biased, yet I'm being legit real with you and I'm telling you the truth that's read straight in front of you. The articles are in the description, or not the description, but they're in the comment section with my comment. They're right there. You can read those uh, articles yourself. They're telling you everything I've said. The Xbox One X underwhelming and is using upscaling techniques. So there you go. I, I read it. You guys saw it. Everything that I've said going up to it with the whole Titanfall 2 being 6K. Yeah, all you retards that said that was dynamic 6 or that was a true 6K. I confirmed that months ago that that was dynamic. It's not true 6K. But you can have uh, people uh, obviously in denial. So that being said, let's go down the list here. All right. PS4 games go live on PlayStation Now, and it's the full list. Now, one dude said that every game was on PlayStation, uh, every PS4 game was on PlayStation uh, Now. Does this look like every game on PlayStation Now? Does this look like every PS4 game? You have Ocubus Beat, Broken Age, Castle Storm Definitive Edition, Darksiders 2, Dead Nation, which I need somebody to play with me with that. I, I, I legit need a partner for that to play it up. Uh, Evolve, Exist, Ar Exist, uh, nah, excuse me, Exist Archive, F1 2015, God of War 3, Grim Fandango, heard good things about that, Hell Divers, Killzone, Shadowfall, MX vs. ATV, uh, Supercross Encore, Nidhogg, Resogun, Saints Row, uh, Super Mega ba uh, Baseball, Tropical 5, Ultra Street Fighter 4, and WWE 2K16. Now, if I look here, let's see. More PS4 games will be added at a later date, and Sony is currently offering a deal for those uh, wanted to join the PlayStation uh, Now subscription service. The PS4 uh, PlayStation Now sir, uh, Now price has dropped to one hundred dollars for a year, or ten dollars for one month. Uh, PlayStation Now Europe lineup is even bigger with 51 titles. Now here's the 51 titles for Europe. Shadowfall, obviously the same games I'm mentioning. Hold on, I'm just go down. I'm just gonna call out the ones that's new. Okay, Heavy Rain. We have Tear Away, Counter Spy, Shadow of Beast, Alienation, Escape Plan. Everybody's gone to the Rapture, Broken Age, Grim the Van Angles already been said. That's been said. That's been said. Uh, okay. Hardware Arrivals, This War of Mine, The Little Ones, Day of the Tentacle Remastered, Sherlock Holmes, Crime and Punishment, Dungeons 2, Back to Bed, Pure Chess, Pure Pool, Oli Oli, Stick to the Man, uh, Blood Bowl, Super Stardust Ultra, um, I already said that, I said that, I said that, I said that, Tour de France, Air Conflicts, uh, Passivist Carriers, Grand Ages Med uh, Medieval, Pure Hold'em, World Poker Championship, Cubert Rebooted, uh, Fluster Cluck, The Last Tinker, uh, Velocity Box, Whispering Willows, Kick Beat Special Edition, Battle Worlds, 
Kronos and Legend of K Anniversary. Yeah, but that's that's definitely every game on PlayStation 4 going to PlayStation Now, right, guys? Yeah. I mean, do I really need to say anything? Do I really need to say anything, guys? Do I really need to? I mean, that just shows the stupidity of Xbox fanboys. It really does. They don't read. They don't do any research. There you go. I should just tell you right there. Absolutely pathetic how they're saying these games are on PlayStation now. <laughs> and what's funny about this whole situation, if you look at the, if you look at the actual, I'm talking to you logically, obviously. If you look at the state of PlayStation now, PlayStation now is not doing well. The subscriptions are not picking up. People are not investing into it. And overall, the service in general, I've already reviewed the service. I called it a joke. The service in general is a joke. It's not a good service. It really is not. It's not a good service. Games are better off either being played uh, natively through backwards compatibility or they are better off just being played on physical disc. You know what I'm saying? You can't stream a game. Games being streamed are absolutely terrible. There's a lot of input lag. There's a lot of delay. There's the games just look choppy and it looks like you're streaming it from it. And even when you press the home button to go sync your trophies, you can legit see that you're streaming this from a PlayStation uh, 3 and it looks terrible. It's not a good experience at all. And even on a PC, I'm telling you, even if you have a high end rig, you're going to run into a lot of problems with PlayStation uh, now. It is not good. It is no good. Especially if you're fighting fighters, you know, you're playing fighting games. It's not a good rig to uh, play this on. It's just bad. It's not the best at all. It's not worth your time. It's not worth your money to invest in. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you're damn strong, but I'm being real with you. It's just not worth the headache, and it's not worth the money. And that's just the God honest truth. Yeah, it would have been cool to see if they actually made, they could make this worse, or work with the whole streaming, because I actually was on board with this. I was like, you know what? That's cool. I like that, because, you know, our library of games were going to, you know, be with us all the time. But at the same time, I didn't think they would turn it into, like, a streaming thing where you had to actually play, uh, pay for it. I didn't think they were going to do that. Now they turn it into something you had to pay for, and you legit have to use it. Um, you know, that right there just has to, uh, you know, that, that right there has to legit come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it just, it's cool on paper, but the execution in general for PlayStation Now, a.k.a. Gaikai, was just, I would say it's poorly executed. It really was. It was poorly executed. It's not worth it. It really is not worth the money. It's not worth your your effort. And don't worry, I'm going to link my review of uh, Gaikai in the description below. Or actually at the end of the video, like always. So you guys can check that out if you want to. But it's just not worth it at all. And uh, that's about it. That's about it, man. I mean, all the retards saying, yeah, all our, all your games are on PlayStation now. Ha ha, the beach is coming. All you got to do is go to the link that's going to be at the end of this video or in the description below. And show them this and just laugh. Because that's really just pathetic. There's no <laughs> games on this. And yeah. Obviously, they put PS4 games on PlayStation now to increase, to hopefully increase memberships. And I hate to break it to you, Tony. Just scrap it. Turn Gaikai service into PlayStation Network servers. You know what I'm saying? Have Gaikai monitor PlayStation Network. Do something like that. You know what I'm saying? Turn those servers into PlayStation um, uh, Network servers and improve the network even more. So that way, you don't have to cut people's internet. To maintain the stability of PlayStation Network. Obviously, Xbox Live doesn't run into this issue. I played on Xbox Live. Xbox Live doesn't run into this issue. You know, if I go home and check my internet on Xbox Live, I kid you not, my internet will be legit where it stands. And that would be above like 90, above 100, you know what I'm saying? Or 60 something. You know what I'm saying? PlayStation 4, I would have to legit, like, I mean, eh, it would show it a few times. It would say 60, it would say 50. Or most of the time, it would say 40 or like 30. You know what I'm saying? My internet is not all the way like used on this. And that's the only thing. That's the only gripe I have with PlayStation Network. You know? That's the only gripe. Other than that, it's cool. But uh, that's it. All right. Obviously, the other big point of this video, you read the title again. PlayStation 5 release date due in 2019. Says uh, with uh, PS4 Pro backwards compatibility. Says analyst. Now, I actually believe this. I believe this. I don't think it would actually be released in 2019, but I do believe we'll see the banner for this right here, like we saw with PlayStation 4 at that February 20 uh, conference when it was like, oh yeah, this is the foundation of our next generation platform, PlayStation 4. They're going to do the exact same thing, PlayStation 5. Obviously, I don't think they're going to show the, the actual the box. We're not going to see the box. We're not going to see the actual box. We might see the new controller, like they did with Andrew, what Mark Cerny and Andrew House showed the new controller for the DualShock 4. And it got a lot of heat, uh, a lot of heat, and a lot of people loved it. And a lot of people talked good about it, saying it was a massive upgrade. And it is. It is a better upgrade than the PS3 controller. But um, that was about it. 
Uh, so we're going to have, uh, it's going to have backwards compatibility with PS4 Pro games. Actually, you know what? I actually believe that too. Why? Because the PS4 Pro and I guess the PS5 obviously are going to use x86 architecture. Third party devs have grown, have grown not only adjusted to it, they love it. It's simple, it's powerful, it's efficient. The only thing that that uh, that x86 needs is just the hardware to uh, push the games. You know what I'm saying? You need a hard, you need hardware that can push those graphics higher, and that's all Sony needs to do. They can deliver a system that can do 4K 60. Boom, we're good to go. You know what I'm saying? That's all we need to do. Obviously, will they do will they do checkerboard rendering though uh, for the PlayStation 5? Only time will tell. Only time will tell until we actually see the actual uh, system. We have to wait. I mean, unless they won, they're willing to wait. Legit, legit uh, wait. But I would have to say they would have to put in a big, big uh, like they would have to put in a good GPU as well as a good CPU. You can't have a good GPU and have the the GPU just be completely dumbed down and and stripped and gimped because of a crappy CPU. That's a huge bottleneck. You just can't do it. I was this is from Michael Pactor, so take that with a huge, 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 huge grain of salt. Michael Pactor is not the best analyst, but you know he does have good points. But at the same time. He's not the best analyst, and half the stuff he says is retarded, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. So keep that in mind. But I do believe we will see the PlayStation 5 in 2019. Hell, even Big Money. I know you guys remember Big Money from the uh, the podcast. He, he's been messaging me saying, yeah, it's going to be in 2019. So I believe it, we will see it in 2019, but it won't be in the way a lot of you guys think. It's going to be in the same way we saw the PlayStation 4 with the February 20th uh, reveal. We're going to see the controller. We're going to see the banner that says PlayStation 5. And then they might show a few tech demos running on the actual system. They might show some third-party devs. They might announce, obviously, again, that all third-party devs are on board and they like the system. And then that's pretty much it. They're going to show, you know... Probably some interviews with the devs saying, hey, look, we have a blank canvas. We can do this and this, that. So there you go. I'm going to read this. And um, this is his quote, I guess. This is Michael Patton's quote. Okay, he has two quotes. So let's go ahead. I really like Sean, and I don't think he is attempting to mislead anyone or anybody. The PlayStation 4 Pro is better from a technical perspective than the PS4. So I think that's a half step towards the PlayStation 5. I think the PlayStation 5 will be another half step. So he is being honest when he said... He is not doing a half step, but the PlayStation 5, how much faster can it be? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with Michael Pactor with the PlayStation 5 being another half step. A half step. PlayStation 5 is not going to be a half step. That's going to be a big step. Sony is known for pushing the hardware. They are known for pushing the specs. And they are known for pushing those visuals, okay? They want those visuals. They want, especially when you have Quanta Dream, that want to get emotion out of characters. So, excuse me. They want to push those specs, okay? So, those specs are definitely going to get pushed. But, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to happen. They, those specs are going to get pushed. Alright. So, PlayStation 5 back compatibility. He had this to say. It will surely support 4K. Will it support 240 frames per second? Great. Will it play games that were, uh, that were made for the PlayStation 4 Pro? That's the question. I think it will. So, I think they will build a console that will... Uh, that will backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4 Pro. So, I think... Um, it will be perceived by consumers to be a half step, and I think Sean is telling the truth when he says there will be a full that okay, it will be a full uh, fledged console. Said Pactor. He added, "My expectation that is uh, that it's not coming out in 2018. That it will be 2019 or 2020. That's my year right there. 2020. You heard, you guys keep hearing me say it. 2020. That's what I'm saying. But probably 2019. Sony's probably timing it better because they are going to bring out a 4K capable device when the 4K TV market uh, reaches 50% in the USA and 35% in the rest of the world. I think Sony has probably got the next console cycle nailed down already. I think they already know what they got to do. And you know what? I agree with you there. I agree with you there. You got a good point. Yes, uh, 4K is not as big yet. 4K is turning big. It's trending, but it's not like hugely. Like not everybody has a 4K display yet. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's kind. It's basically the HDMI situation all over again. Back when we couldn't get HD uh, HDMI enabled TVs, you know, at good prices, they were they cost a lot, a good chunk at the time. So um, there you go. It's basically in that uh, regard. Uh, 4K is definitely going to lead, um, we're definitely getting there in terms of 4K, we're getting there, so by the time the PlayStation 5 gets there, a lot of, um, like the US will have a good chunk of them out there, and they know what to expect, and Sony, all they need to do is just make a console, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Sony, I'm telling you, Sean, 
Telling you, Andrew, Mark Cerny, you uh, genius, you got to put in a good GPU in this thing, and you got to put in also a good uh, CPU that doesn't bring it down, but it needs a CPU that can handle the GPU and push it forward and keep it future-proofed for a long time. You know what I'm saying? You need that. That's what you need. That's all you need. And watch this system do well. Hell, it'll do even better than the PlayStation 4. And I can only imagine what The Last of Us Part 3 will look like on the PlayStation 5. Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5. Days Gone 2. You know these games are going to get sequels. These games are going to get supported. So you know these games are going to do well. And Horizon Zero Dawn 2. I can't, I, I can't help but imagine what these games are going to look like on a PlayStation 5. So that's going to be great. You know, obviously I'm going to be upgrading my rig as well. I have to upgrade my rig as the years go. So, but that's about it though. That's about it. That's all the news I got for you. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I did ramble a little bit, but you know, you guys like when I ramble. You guys like when I uh, legit talk. So, there you guys go. If you liked the video, thumbs it up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Uh, if you're new, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit me up with a like. Uh, if you want to add me on PSN, it's, it's the same as the P, uh, same as the YouTube channel. And that's about it, man. So right, I'm uh, out of here. I'm going to uh, go ahead and go back downstairs. It's getting hot in this room again. So <laughs> thank you guys again. You guys be good. And I'll see you guys later. Deuces.